Okay. Well, um, so in terms of any logistics here, everyone's comfortable. I mean, we're all unmuted, so we could all speak, but let's not try to speak at all at the same time because it's very difficult when that happens. Uh, I just have a question. Can you just tell me uh, who are the board members present and who is the liaison and anybody else? Why don't we Why don't we do that? Let's Let's go around and acknowledge everyone who's on the call here. So I'm JD Miller. I'm the chairman of the board. Linda. Linda Hayes, director of the senior center. Lucille Sartino, board member. Hey, Linda, yeah, a board member. Janice, Janice Desmond. Desmond. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Janice <laughs> board member. Janice Desmond, coach, co-chair. Elaine Shubari, uh, liaison from Friends of Citrus Seniors. Uh, Karen Canfield, liaison from Board of Selectmen. Joan Powers, liaison for the South Shore LD Services. Well done. And me? Uh, Maud Mills, a uh, board member. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Oh. <laughs> okay, so everyone is... is yes, yeah, do you see that? Done. Leslie's on. You know why I know that? Leslie's here. Okay, good. Do you see... Leslie? No. Good? I'm here. Sorry. Okay, Janice, you're still number five. <laughs> Inside joke, sorry. Uh, we'll so we'll let, explain it later. So look, we, we did a little roll call here. I think everyone's here. Is Leslie, in fact, on? Yes. Okay. Hi. Um, <laughs> does anybody have any procedural questions here before we sort of just jump in? Hmm. Uh, JD, I think that because it's a Zoom, I think you're required to vote on any vote do a roll call because you're not per together. Okay. And, and you have to read that declaration, correct, Karen? You're supposed to read the declaration, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's got minutes from June. Oh, no, we do not have minutes from the last uh, meeting, which was in June. Um, Maud had been unable to attend and Leslie was unable to take minutes. So I talked to Jill today and she'll fashion my, my report from June into minutes that we can at least post on the website, um, but we do not have them to approve at this time. Okay. Okay, well, then we don't have any minutes to worry about, so we can move right into our director's report. My director, okay, well, here, hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, great to see you all, and thank you for doing this um, alternative to the conference call, which is just so much more pleasant under the circumstances. Um, I'll try to be a little bit brief and not, you know, not endless. Um, I did send the report, so if you happen to have it, you know, just a little bit of a guide for what I'm saying. We are still trying to keep our communication outlets, you know, open and, and uh, useful. It seems to have fallen off a little bit just because we have been busy, and I know it's hard to maybe imagine why or how, but we are, you know, just trying to be in touch and trying to keep some things afloat and trying to communicate. Um, <clears throat> So uh, our website is, is still being kept up to date, the town website page. Um, shortly, um, if not this week, then next week, I will have a brief survey actually link on the, the town web page, the Council on Aging page, which is really uh, going to just be asking what types of activities or if certain activity would be amenable to some people, if they would um, with a yes or a no or a maybe response, come to this senior center for an activity or the community building or the recreation gymnasium, you know, or outside. In other words, just to sort of gauge how people are feeling about participating or having something scheduled and whether or not it, it's really worth it. You know, we um, want to make sure everything is done in their best interest. So that's why um, 
we haven't necessarily rushed to a lot of things, but um, I just think it might be worthwhile. Also, it gives me a chance to ask if people are going to take advantage of it. You know, if they have concerns about getting enough food or if they have concerns still about a medical appointment or if they have access to medical um, assistance if they need it. So those are some of the questions on the survey, which um, IT is actually doing for me through uh, SurveyMonkey. Um, we just uh, were submitting a newsletter for September and October tomorrow. So it's, it's really early to have to do that if we're trying to do some things, let's say even in October, but you know, we do the best I can, we can, and it's not easy, but we do have some things scheduled, many, many of them virtual, most of them virtual, um, but, but not all. <clears throat> Um, emails still go out, you know, and they're time consuming, especially making sure everybody's got the links as we even just saw from tonight. So Lisa does a lot of that for the exercise classes and the things we're doing outside. The men's breakfast, which is monthly, but I do the weekly Zoom call on Thursday mornings. Um, and then I, I haven't done one probably for um, three or four weeks now, a constant contact email, which I'm due to do. And I usually do that to supplement the newsletter, but um, so I'm a little bit behind on that, but I'll get to it. Um, we okay. had our volunteer well, lunch and some of you I missed mean, it. There's a, huh? there's, a big, there's a benefit to a degree to be, be more recent. So if, if your weekly emails are going out for something the following week, that might be better than for someone to get the newsletter that's got an October date on it. So. Yes, so you're saying yes, the constant contact is a help yeah. in that regard yes it is and i mean i never wanted the the constant contact emails to overwhelm people and just like they stop reading them because there's too much in them so i try to feature something yeah. you know a few different things just so it's shorter yeah. and more current you know immediate imminent um so i start to say we had way back way back <laughs> in june we had our volunteer luncheon <laughs> grab and go luncheon, which was absolutely fabulous, but some of you forgot or missed it. So I'm sorry, but um, Caitlin, Janice, Lucille came by. <laughs> um, we had some wonderful musicians playing for us and it was really nice. Um, I just uh, had word today, which is in the report, but that our new electronic uh, payment page is ready or at least ready to be tested on the town website. So um, you can feel free to go on. I could send you the link, but you really don't need it. It is there. If you go on the town webpage and go to um, the town clerk's page and then um, enter in through a button uh, that says town clerk actually and treasurer, and then we show up as the Council on Aging with um, the items that we would start with for payments. Generally speaking, it's fitness, classes, um, donations, and even though we're not really doing trips yet, and we haven't been uh, charging for transportation, the minimal amount we've done. But anyway, it's a start and it looks great and I think it will work nicely. Uh, electronic checking is a much more reasonable option because that's only a 25 cent fee where if they did choose to use credit cards, it's a good almost $7 fee when they do that, which is unfortunate, but if they needed to, they could. Um, so transportation has continued. Um, you know, it's really well structured. Kathy um, takes good care of the drivers, the vans, and the clients, of course, as you well know. Um, I mean, she'll deliver the schedule still down to the van. The drivers are doing the cleaning. We only allow up to four riders at a time. So sometimes that means two trips to the supermarket. It varies week to week. They go to Shaw's once a week, Village Market once a week, which could include maybe a stop at CVS for a prescription. Um, medical rides, you know, we have been handling those such as they've been, and I, I actually don't have a number. I know she, she gave me a report. But, you know, we have Joe on at least three days a week, and much of that is medical, out of town medical. Um, we have one woman who's been continuing to do dialysis and Social Community Action Council had done her and that was all they were doing. But we did just get word that they are beginning their own transportation again so we could use them if we don't have a driver because we only are, have two of our three. So Mary generally works two of the days doing the supermarket runs and Joe does a lot of the out of town. Um, 
we do do prescription pickups and honestly, um, it's really an outreach thing and we're trying to maintain that number in outreach. But, you know, Jenny may do it, I may do it, or our drivers may do it. And, you know, sometimes the request comes in through transportation. We want to make sure she tells us that they're doing a prescription pickup and delivery for someone just to make sure that that's part of our, the number where we want that number. So Linda, um, Linda is yep. there a way for volunteers to sign up for a volunteer list for something like that? Um, well, yes, and I guess that's that's a that's a good segue, sort of. Um, you know, the sands.org website that was used, you know, at the height of the COVID situation um, remains in, in place and they are still getting some requests uh, periodically. It could be a prescription pickup and they do have volunteers. I think partly when it was a senior or one of our clients that, that we were familiar with, we, we sort of did want to take it if we could just to maintain that connection and that contact. But if we needed to allow that, we would. We, we shied away from having new volunteers that hadn't been vetted necessarily yet. Right. Um, and, and we weren't really using volunteers. And if the volunteers were our seniors, we, we just weren't doing that yet. We could do that now. We, sh we surely could do that now. We just haven't had the need, I suppose. But, um, but that could be something we, we talk about. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, we still did birthday calls in July, but I'm sorry if your birthday's been in August so far. We, we haven't got to that yet. But anyway, June and July, we were right on it. So um, that was fun. And, it, and it, served, it served our purposes, not just as a sideline, but, you know, was just those were the people that we ended up speaking to, sometimes for a good 20 minutes or so. I mean, it's funny. Sometimes we also got to update our database with this new information because I talked to a lovely woman who was now in North Carolina, <laughs> but you know, we updated her. Anyway, it was great. So you know, it's, it's, it was a nice practice or exercise. Do you Caitlin, guys, do you have a, yeah, I have a question about the birthday calls. You guys do that every month, is that right? Well, we did it for July, uh, June and July, yes. Okay. And, and I'd like to continue it, I would. And that would be an area we could use a volunteer as well, or well, several, yes. but it was also nice for us so we tried to divide it among the staff, but quite yeah. honestly, I did not mind. I would say, you know, I'm going to call these people because I wanted to say hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I yes. Yes, because I think, well, one, it's a really great idea in general, and it would be a great opportunity for volunteers. But also, I've, I've, I've heard in other communities where they use the birthday, um, you know, they use the, the town census list. And like when someone turns 60, they send them a postcard, a happy birthday card that yeah. sort of says, check out the senior center, um, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. it may be just as we're ramping up for the new space and we're, you know, we're trying to build awareness around it. It could be something um, to think about. Absolutely. I know it's been a surprise. We were doing only for the 60 and over just because we do have other names in our database. But even for someone 61, for instance, like surprise, the senior center is calling. Yeah. <laughs> like the other AARP, I know. Um, but it's, that's a great, great point, Caitlin. Thank you. We should do that. Um, so for food assistance, just to, you know, I know I've lamented this a couple of times, you know, we don't do lunch yet. And, and I, I really wished I could figure out a way to have us as the staff, the current staff in our current digs, doing some sort of takeout, grab and go lunch weekly. I really wanted to do that, but the effort and the initiative, it was just too, too um, big an idea at this moment while we tried to maintain, you know, other, other, um, activities so we didn't do that what we did have an opportunity to do was distribute some available food boxes to about 20 of our clients two times uh, once in uh, once in June sorry and once just recently in August so they were selected through our current database um, for people that Jenny works with or was aware of um, and it came from it was a USDA food box program that came in through South Shore Elder Services so um, we had to go pick it up. There was some PR involved in that, and, it, and it's been nice. So they've been very appreciative, really good sized boxes, one with chicken and cheese and another with um, a variety of frozen meats, but really good hot dogs and sausages and um, something else. I can't remember what that was yet. 
Um, so that, that's been nice and they'll do that two more times this year with us. So at least that's something we felt like we were, you know, um, instrumental in providing. Uh, also the food pantry and Meals on Wheels continues to get our referrals and we do stay in touch with them, of course, on a regular basis, Jenny primarily. Um, so the housing authority, no special concerns or problems, you know, that we've, you know, had to step in for. So they seem, they seem good. But I did take the opportunity to include in my report and maybe thought I'd mention just that um, the Lawson Green apartments are coming up for the lottery, which, you know, I tried to sort of be ahead of it. Um, and because of COVID, you know, they originally thought they might get, have more uh, opportunity for the public to see it you know, flyers for the, for the lottery at the library or at Town Hall. And of course, people aren't coming into places. So I had reached out to the developer and the marketing guy and, and said, I'd be happy to help, you know, put the word out. He never really got back to me. So I just used the website. So I wanted you all to know, in case you're asked, that um, the, web, the town website has the link to the Lawson Green apartment website, but I included it in the report as well. So in that, um, or on that page, you know, Monday is the day the application becomes available. They can get it any number of ways, online, by phone, or just downloading it themselves um, and completing it. And there's some text there that explains how it will work for the lottery. Um, so I imagine this is going to be popular. I just don't know if under the circumstances, everyone that wants to be notified or aware of it is going to be. So um, it is something maybe we could be a little bit proactive about trying to get the word out for. Linda, I guess that would be something for the weekly, um, for the weekly update from Town Hall to Karen, is, now that I think about that. Linda, Linda, is every single unit up for lottery? Yes. Okay, what is yep, it? There's two, there's two tiers for the unit. So the, um, and forgive me, it's been a little while since I, I looked at this. One of the tiers, which covers fewer units, is uh, at a, a lesser amount of money, you know, like 60 percent, 60, one is 60% of sort of the median of the situate uh, property um, value, and another is 30%, roughly, don't quote me, but so there's two tiers as to what those rent amounts will be. That's how they're based. Okay. That's the affordability factor. Is it 45 units or more? It's 30 units. 30 units, okay. Which, is, which will go fast. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyway, that's in there, and I thought you'd be interested in hearing a little about that. Funny enough, I believe that's probably coming online right about the same time as the Senior Center. <laughs> it's just interesting that the timing is parallel. Um, so we still have people um, calling and getting... Uh, receiving help for Shine. And I guess I could take this opportunity. We have one Shine volunteer that everyone's been aware of since Norman's retirement, and that's Rich Durkin. But Elaine Shambari, our own liaison here, um, Elaine Shambari, will be our next, or is ready to become our next um, Shine volunteer counselor as well. So we don't have her on the schedule yet, but but that's how it's going. Um, that's great. Is by phone only, not in person. The more the, more the merrier. The more the merrier. You know, we really appreciate it. she went through her training since since March, all during COVID, so kept her busy. Um, we've been giving out a lot of beach passes, I will just say. That's been a nice thing. They really appreciate the beach passes this year. Um, not so much on the transport station. So programs, let me just go through it very quickly. So Janice and I just did a four-week Zoom memory training, which was sort of a nice test pilot. Um, smaller number, but it worked out very well and it gave us some confidence so that we definitely will continue to do that by Zoom. It was a really good platform for it. It worked out, worked out well. Um, yoga and chair yoga continue um, on Zoom with both Elizabeth who does it here on Zoom and then Ian who does it at home with her own client base, which includes the senior center participants. Um, we still have our SCTV videos um, ongoing with Seth. So those could be updated. We haven't updated those in a couple of months now, but they are still on the schedule. Uh, Bob Jackman continues to provide me with his um, presentations. And then we go through the, the um, 
several steps to get it on video and posted to both SCTV and YouTube for the weekly classes. Um, Men's Breakfast continues monthly. Um, so we've got a lineup for September, October, and November coming up. Uh, the weekly coffee discussion group, granted it might be 10 to 13 people, um, but it's really been great. And I think it's been uh, somewhat of a nice mix, funny enough, leans toward the men more than the women. Um, but I'm on it every week and a couple of other, few other regulars, some regulars, Dick Eckhouse helps to host and monitor that um, or yeah, where I need it, if I need it. But that's been fun. I encourage it. I know Janice came on a few times. It was, it was yeah, great. Linda, I have a question about that, the weekly discussion group. Yes. Um, do they t select topics ahead of time kind of thing? Well, we sort of tried that in the beginning and, you know, and then it sort of became somebody would bring up one thing and then that would become the topic and it was hard to sort of shut that down and say, oh, but we had a topic. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, so I, have, I just, I have yeah. an idea for a topic and, a. Okay. Um, there's an, an anti-ageism campaign that was put, put out in, in Massachusetts and yeah. there's been a discussion guide, like sort of a set of discussion questions that were developed for communities to start a discussion about ageism across generations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it would be a really easy, great sort of Zoom right. program. So I don't yeah. know if it's that, if it's that mechanism or whether it would be a standalone program, but I'm happy to facilitate it. Um, Very nice. If, we would take I you like up that. on that. Nice. I think they'd appreciate it. And it would be, a, I, yeah, we could even, you know, make it intergenerational or something. Well, I'll mention that, and, and we, we did have uh, Lisa's daughter, Jackie, came on, you know, at the sort of the beginning of the Black Lives Matter um, movement when it was first um, in the news. And um, so she, that was nice, both for her and I think the other people on the call. So, and we've also had, we had the police chief come on. Um, the health department director, of course, and um, today was Kyle Boyd, the coastal resource officer, which was a very meaty discussion. And that led me to, because of course, part of the coastal vision, funny enough, well, with the harbor and, and ideas for maintaining, of course, and vitalizing the harbor is um, the walkability. And then of course, it led me to realize, well, you know, it could be part of the age-friendly discussion too. Um, and so that is a nice segue to what you suggested. So I think they'd be ready for that. Yeah. I'd love to do it. Okay, so yeah. we'll talk. Okay. We'll talk. I have um, two other program ideas. I, I, well, I'm not, <laughs> well, I have the, the mic. I'll just tell you okay. my other two ideas and then we can move on. Yeah, no, that's good. That's great. Um, break up it, break everything. The up. other is, I don't know, have, you, have we been connected to a memory cafe in the past? Well, I've been wanting to do a memory cafe for a couple of years. We just okay. didn't get it off the ground. So the um, so Jewish Family Community Services they yep. they have put them all online all oh, on Zoom. Oh, they, okay. They have a daily calendar, and I'm, there's okay. like a, three to four a day um, that are being done remotely. And for folks who don't know what a memory cafe, it's it's a a very informal sort of social gathering for people living with dementia and their care partners. So it's intended to be both an opportunity for the caregivers to sort of talk amongst themselves. But also is a they usually have some kind of music or art or program mm -hmm. for the Thank people you. with dementia. And so this might be I'll send you the link um, to the calendar, but it might be something worth sharing. Um, yeah, very, very nice. That is absolutely. And that might be a nice segue just to offer it or, you know, introduce it this way. And then, you know, when we can do things on site, they'll, yeah. they'll know about it. Right, right. And okay. um, and the What's other thing. Yeah, the last thing is that um, on September 28th, it's National Good Neighbor Day. <laughs> and um, I know in the world of aging, you know, in my professional world, there's a lot of um, talk about how to sort of engage with that initiative at a local level to connect with people who are isolated because of COVID. Um, and so there's a pledge that can be signed by people who sort of pledge to be a good neighbor on September 28th. Um, but I was thinking of your, your Facebook post, you know, for a while you were having people sort of do yeah. something. Yeah, special. yeah, that was fun. <laughs> it, it could be, um, it could tie into that to sort of say, you know, be a good neighbor, wave to someone in the store or, you know, yeah. give a compliment or something just really small to, to bring awareness um, uh, to that. So that was my other. That's nice. I didn't know about that. Thank you. That's a yeah. great idea. I'll send the link too. Lovely. We're looking, you know, any ways to connect and, and that's what we need to do and keep doing because, you know, it has been mentioned to me 
you know, needless to say for all of us, you know, in some ways the isolation um, leads to some loneliness and, and potentially depression, but you know, there's some that we just haven't found a way to yeah. reach. Um, all right, that's fabulous. Um, we've been doing, you know, we do have some programs coming up, as I've mentioned, I won't go into details, but the birding one we've been waiting for a long time. So that is coming up in September. It's on Zoom. Oh. I think so. Now I forget if it's Zoom or live. It might be live. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I'll just look at the newsletter. Um, and maybe using the recreation gym for a couple of things if we can. So um, I actually, it's the point in my report where I can talk about the senior center. Is everybody okay with doing that at this point? Yeah. Okay. So we have the weekly construction meetings, which generally speaking are conference calls, but, but sometimes I go up and then, you know, maybe you have to have a meeting or take a look at something. So it's been great to be there and to see it coming, um, you know, advancing the way it is, progressing. Um, they are going to begin soon using the new entrance to the senior center for all the construction and everything. So you may see that they're going to close up the old one that's been where the trucks are going in. So that'll be, that'll be significant when it happens. Two trees are coming down this weekend, I believe, and that, that will be noticeable. One of them is very big in front of the recreation center and the gymnasium, but it's rotted out completely. Nobody would know that unless you looked really closely, but they are taking it down. And the other one is near our building, right on the corner between um, our building and the B-Wing. And so that's, Mike Green wants to take it down because it's serving no purpose and would have to have been pruned back a great deal. So just so you know that. The rec center has been a little quiet. They put in the parking lot in the front there or are working on that, but they, the work inside has been um, suspended a little bit delayed because of some um, discoveries in the walls upstairs when they're doing the restrooms. So that's just been pending. They're not really, um, delayed ultimately, but it has been a delay of a few weeks. Um, they are planning to put the plantings in this fall. So that's something that will end up, you know, happening sooner than later. They're shooting for October. So that you'll see some of the landscaping coming in because they don't want to wait. And then it would have to be the spring after the building opens. Right. So that's that timing. I'm sure if you've been by, you've seen the roof going on, the roofing. Um, Windows. Windows are in, yep. Um, the wall framing inside has started. You know, you can actually walk through the rooms now. Um, the interior finishes were just voted on officially with the Public Building Commission last <laughs> night. Um, so basically that means the initial finishes are the flooring styles and, and you know, color chosen. Um, we had both Leslie and um, Janice Desmond and myself had, had worked through this a little bit with the designer and the architect. In the end, Joel, Joel did sort of step in, swoop in, and, and had some opinions about things. So, you know, they were well taken. Um, it, it's going to look very nice. Uh, we will end up having two different colors of luxury vinyl tile, um, which is a wood-like look. We're gonna have a slightly darker brown tone in the multi-purpose room, which would be unique, and then a lighter brownish gray um, in the other areas, um, partially on the first floor, um, and then on the second floor in all the program rooms, except for the fitness room that has its own flooring material that has more give and is meant you know, for the dancing and stuff that we'd be doing in there. Um, but the um, Rug then is going to actually, there'll be two colors of the same style carpet that Janice and Leslie did um, was their, their choice. But the lighter tone will be upstairs and the darker tone will be downstairs and going up the stairs. So anyway, those were significant things that you know you want to get right, just saying. Um, also, we chose uh, white window shades. Now I will bring this up because I did have to make a decision, executive decision and um, at first I wanted, uh, it wasn't in the contract, but we, I thought we would need, uh, room darkening shades in some of the rooms because, you know, we'd show a film, we'd show, um, visual presentations, PowerPoints, things like that. But, um, 
And then I wanted maybe a dual shade system, which meant we got both in the multi-purpose room, for instance. Well, that change order was about $8,000. So that was a lot of money. And, you know, then we looked at the lighting in the building and the opacity of the shades that are being ordered. And frankly, we, I think at this point that we can forego the room darkening shades everywhere, really. Um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, I feel pretty confident that when those shades are pulled down, we will still show a movie. And even though there'd be some filtering, it wouldn't be significant. It's a big room and also upstairs in the program rooms. You know, the sun comes up in the morning, um, probably when we're not doing that on the east side, of course, and then it was on the other side of the building after that. So anyway, that was an executive decision. I just save us a little money and I think, we, I think we'd be okay and we'll see if we're not, it would be less spending later and we could get the money from another source than spend it out of the budget now. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what else? Uh, the FF&E is in progress, and that stands for Furnishings, Fixtures, and Equipment, which is quite literal, as, as it turns out. So, you know, we're working with a designer for the furnishings. That doesn't necessarily mean the equipment, and now discovering that maybe some things aren't in the contract. We're not positive where they are and what line item, like TVs. Um, or the cardio equipment that we wanted to put in, only three or four of them, but still that's a significant price tag. So um, with that said, you know, I'm having to meet tomorrow just to define the parameters for what money is available for the furnishings and then what needs to be allotted to, let's say, the kitchen um, or some of the other items that we need to um, fund. Yes, Caitlin. I just have a question about that. I, you know, I'm wondering, how now that we're in sort of COVID times and thinking about moving forward, I mean, one of the things I would want to be sure we have the capacity to continue including people by Zoom in mm -hmm. programming rooms. And so I don't know if we uh, sort of um, oh, plan for that, you know, plan for the number of TVs or monitors or capacity to do that. But in, in we, we don't have to do it now, but I do think it'll be important that all of our program rooms have the ability for people to join um, remotely. I agree. I, I, I think that, you know, that was one of the things when we toured uh, Falmouth, we certainly saw um, a significant number of TVs. Uh, so I think that's something we should well, circle. Yep. We do. I mean, we have always planned to have the TVs in the two sort of uh, primary program rooms and then some of the other areas. And, you know, in terms of wireless connectivity and whatnot that's in place um, but um, I guess you know I can't give you a number right now whether it's five rooms that we have it in but anyway yes point point well taken yeah um, in fact even now I mean we could but it's hard to know how to do both so somebody could be teaching yes and still someone's connected in and on the screen like we're looking at now I guess but mm -hmm. um, yeah we'll have to figure that out and, you know, I've been asked, even actually the guy on the Thursday morning calls, you know, do we have some built-in contingencies? And I mean, that would be one of them. The idea that, well, even if, you know, we open the building, if the room holds 28 people for a presentation, we will be limiting it to 14. If, you know, we can serve lunch, which we hope to do, um, we may need two seatings. Um, we'll always, we planned on having to-go options as well as seated. Um, lunches. But anyway, so those types of things uh, we are certainly looking at. Um, and that is actually a decent segue here to my next item in my report, which is reviewing the HVAC um, as one example, and I'll move on after that. But, you know, I needed a crash course because naturally I'm being asked and, you know, not like I actually understood all of what was being discussed early on in the plans. Um, we do have a good system. We do have an efficient system. Could it be upgraded? And we have gone to the consultant to, to ask for what those recommendations might be. And, you know, Kevin Kelly, who's our facilities guy, he's already looking at the UV lights yep. that, that might be used to upgrade a system. And we would do that. We will jump on that, that um, 
increases, um, I know this, anyway, the bacteria, that increases um, resistance to the bacteria that could collect in, in a room. Um, so I think that's an absolute. There's a couple of other suggestions where we could go, and they do talk about upgrading the filters, but frankly, I think I think we already have good filters, but we'll see what Kevin says about that or the consultant. Um, people ask about HEPA filters because they hear about them related to green um, green buildings and whatnot, but those are those restrict airflow, and we want to increase airflow. So that actually isn't the direction we would go, just saying. So there are other filters that we might look at that if they're mm -hmm. higher grade, we could do that. Um, so just so everybody knows, yes, we are looking at that, but, but really kind of having to learn now. It's a great system, it will be fine, but at the same time, maybe we could make it better. The, um, the uh, hardware for the door, for the entries, so we're, we're having a conference call next week because we were going to use the push button handicapped automated door opening, but now we wanna you know, have a motion sensor for the door to open that way all the time. Yeah. So we didn't have room to do a sliding uh, door because you need two full size width doors. Um, so it would have to be still a hinged door that opens automatically. But anyway, so that's what we're talking about and how that works with the keying. Um, access and whatnot. So, you know, we're looking at touchless now where we might not have been before. <clears throat> and um, audio visual, now I guess I have to publicly apologize because I did not include Pat Carlton or Barbara McFadden in the emails I sent out. I, I just had not added them to our full list as yet, so I forgot them. Um, Pat had had a question about um, uh, built in accommodations for hearing impaired. So even though, you know, I talked about that, I thought generally with the architect during the plans, it, you know, it's not a high level built in system, we can still connect to the speaker system with the one I did purchase for here. But, but we will look at whether or not we still have a window maybe to upgrade that just because, you know, it's, it might be worthwhile, at least in the multi purpose room. But you know, the, the audio visual has been considered and certainly is um, pretty sophisticated, I guess, um, speaker wise and all in the, in the ceiling, but um, we are still looking into that. So I guess those are the things I wanted to mention um, that we've been working on. The public building commission meetings, you know, maybe going to twice a month just because there's a lot of invoices that need to be taken care of and sometimes decisions and votes that we need them to make so that the contractor can place orders or, or what have you. So um, we do have a second one this month in August and then there'll be two in September, especially regarding the furniture. Um, <clears throat> so we did meet um, on a conference call today too regarding, you know, whether to um, stay with the single vendor for the furnishings or put it out to bid. So the recommendation was maybe to have some invited um, bidders, not really put it out full, but we could include a couple of other um, vendors to bid on the furnishings, which, yes, Karen, unmute. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, I got you. Sorry, I muted because I didn't want the, you know, the birds chirping. Um, I was gonna mention this when I, when I give you a town update, but, um, I know that um, we have a very, uh, a very generous uh, resident who owns a furnishing store, which I think Linda and I have talked about before. He contacted me last week saying, hey, you know, don't forget I'm here, I wanna help. And mm -hmm. he, um, he sent an email to Steve Kirby. So that connection has been made. He was very, um, he gave a very competitive bid for mm -hmm. um, Gates and for, um, I guess it was just, and for the library. And yeah. so I'm glad, you know, and plus it's a local, a local guy. So that connection was made, um, I think yesterday or the day before. So yes, it was, it was, and it, it precipitated some other discussions. So, um, oh, good. Okay, good. You know, we're going to meet next week. Just, I need to provide a more definitive list so that we know what they'd be bidding on and, um, which I will do. So, um, a couple other things. I mean, you know, coming out of the budget, just so I guess it's good for you to know, but like the TREF, this uh, new island 
that is an add in now because um, it actually comes out of the lawsuit against the, the senior center. So one of the concessions was the right turn only, which requires a little triangular island that's curved. That wasn't part of the plan. So it's not in yet. And so that's um, out of the contingency uh, money that we have also because the planning board um, required that well, we have to do a six month plan for them as far as the usage and the usage of the parking lot. But we may need to prepare the extra parking earlier um, because we don't know whether, whether, well, I mean, not to say I wouldn't love it. We, you know, that's a great idea to have more parking. It wasn't in the original plan, but now the monies kind of have to be set aside because if it is required, it would be better to use the resources we have working on the site now at a lesser cost than having to bring people back in and do it later. So that's another chunk potentially coming out of or at least being reserved from the contingency. Um, so we've used a lot of that. It was a originally a um, $500,000 contingency and yep. you know, it's down to maybe two. Yep. So um, we don't have a lot of wiggle room now for, for extras. Um, and then uh, one more thing I'll pose here now, you know, question of the signage for identifying the building. And I will just say that without maybe having pursued any more widespread focus groups, I've, I've certainly done some, you know, maybe more casual basis before even COVID. And, um, but, you know, the, the feeling I get from most people is that they're just fine with Situate Senior Center. So I think, because, you know, it's going to, be on the building. So we kind of needed to have some idea if we were going to change that or not. But at this point, we are not. Um, and the other consideration would be for room naming, which had been discussed as potentially being a fundraising campaign and then COVID hit. But I'm told that we need to get information to the architect sooner than later, believe it or not, for, you know, actually signage inside the building. Um, and so I don't know if that's going to preclude us from, from pursuing that or whether we'd end up with you know two sorts of plaques on the rooms or, yep. <laughs> and yep, you're probably gonna say what I just thought, but go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, you got it. Is it gonna be, or we could do a, like a one big sign if people donate? Anyway, go ahead, Karen, no, you do it. Well, yeah, so the way that we, the workaround for that for the library, and I don't think you should, you should um, I think you should anticipate it now is mm -hmm. that, um, the, all the signs were designed, yeah. and then there was a space at the bottom where a plaque could be inserted that didn't look weird that it wasn't okay. filled. Oh, so I see. now, if you were to come in now and say you wanted to name something in the library, that plaque would then ah. just be inserted. So it's a standardized thing. Very um, good. And yep. much cheaper to do that up front and have it there and then just buy the plaque to insert later. Um, and then you guys may decide, you know, that to, to name a building or to name a room is going to cost a lot more than, you know, say a donation to the board. And so at the, um, at the, at the, um, whatchamacallit, at the library, they did the Thousand Homes um, campaign. And for $1,000, you got put on that big plaque that's in the lobby. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you know, because it was a small. So we could have that too. Yeah. Yeah. For like a lower price point contribution. Um, you know, there's, a, we could talk about that all day long, but there's a million ways to do it. But he's absolutely right. If you just, if you, you should pick a sign that you can just insert whatever you want. So, all right. Well, and that said, uh, we had gone to Falmouth and I certainly did like their theme. They named all of their rooms after one of the different beaches, each one of the different beaches in Falmouth. You know, you need a way to identify the rooms. And so far we're doing multi-purpose room, program room one, program room two, and that has no, you know, that has no, no um, savvy. So anyway, it's something that we could consider. We may need to do that sooner. I'm not saying we need to vote on that tonight or but anybody has ideas. I like the beach idea, but I, we have enough. Um, or at least prominent landmarks, I guess. Yeah, I or areas of town or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, those are just some thoughts. And again, I hadn't heard from Gordon or anyone from that committee on where that campaign is um, in light of COVID, I guess, or um, maybe 
um, maybe Elaine can speak to that a little bit when it's her turn for um, reporting. But I think um, that's pretty much my, the end of my report, thankfully. Huh? <laughs> okay, does, does anybody have any questions for Linda? I, I have one question. Yep. I'm just uh, curious about the, um, you said the exit, the, there's gonna be a right turn only now? Yeah. Yes, at First Parish. Onto First Parish. And with the island there, does that affect like the emergency apparatus that would have to come in and out? Well, that's been considered. Um, so no, I will say no, I'm not sure how it's working now that you asked that, but people can come in that way yeah. from either direction. So it's two way, but once yeah. they're exiting, you know, it's a right turn only. Right. It was always and continues to be egress from behind from the other end of the parking lot behind the existing B-Wing and the tennis courts out onto Cudworth. And part of that was also always the emergency access and egress. And then there is okay. a way from the recreation entrance and parking lot, which is on Cudworth across, believe it or not, the grass, there's like some temporary grass planned for yeah. there for, the, um, for emergency vehicles should they need it. So okay. that was part of the original plan. I, I guess, you know, I'm a little faint on that right now, but okay. I don't, it, it's not a problem They that they're doing it. It's not okay. a problem. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. I mean, I, I, it's probably like short enough they could probably just drive over it. <laughs> you know, I think it yeah. does make the driveway a little bit thinner. It's kind of unfortunate, yeah. but, you know, I yeah. guess it's, it's feasible. Mm -hmm. And the tree that they're taking down, you said, is in front of, like, it's not the big one. No, okay, Karen. Which one where? Which big one? Which big one? It's the a big, big one, one in front of the rec center. It is in front of the rec center. It's enormous. It's huge. There is a big oh, one. Wait. No, There's the one that's uh, that's right uh, in front of gates, like the entrance. Not right in front of gates, no. the entrance. Okay, all right. I think that's, I know which one you that's mean. That's a protected tree. Right. Is it? Well, they know that they had an arborist come and, and he yeah. did a 40 page report. Yeah. And frankly, oh the God. arborist report wanted to take down a lot of trees and of course you know no we're not doing that yeah <laughs> but okay. he didn't like any of the trees apparently but no just these four okay all right Thank i you. mean there's a lot of stuff going in too i actually have I, I i'm not bothering to go over that but you know there's a lot of plantings going in a lot of trees yeah. you know many of which um will be on the abutter side but some are in the green area around the patio um this, this, this will be very nice. No, I Lots love driving it. by it. I drive by it like every day, so. <laughs> oh, but I know it really does look nice. Yeah. I know I didn't just watch the progress. So. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It really does, it really yeah. does. It's yeah. blending, surprisingly. I know, you know, it seemed big at first, but now it's blending. Yeah, maybe now with the windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Hey, Linda, Linda, yes. I have a question, uh, uh, real specific, and you might not be able to answer this, um, but on Jenny's report, yeah. there was a number for food assistance in July that caught my eye, because June was a total of three people, and July was 36 people for food assistance. You know what, that's, what that is that interesting. Number? When I saw that number, I assume she's counting the people that we distributed those USDA food boxes to. Um, okay. Although technically that that was in June, but you know what? We um, she might have put it in July because it was right on the right on the cusp of the month. Yeah. That's my that's my thought because, because the num that the numbers was twenty jump. people. Um, in addition, she certainly is, you know connecting people, more people with the food pantry and helping a great deal. And maybe some had been more reluctant to do that or need some assistance with, with even though they do deliver, the food pantry is delivering. Yep. Um, she has too, actually. Okay. Just, well, just that, that caught my eye. Yeah that, yeah, that is funny, but that's what I think. And she's not here to tell me, so. Uh, does anyone else have any questions, uh, comments? ideas to throw out real quick on Linda's report? One quick question. Did, yeah. did, did the design review committee get involved with the picking of the um, flooring and all of that? Were they, they did. They did not. They did not. Um, we saw them back last, you know, 
long time. I want to say that was July last year, July 9th. Um, and that was all about the outside. I think I remember asking, would they want to be involved? And I guess maybe that's not really their function. Um, okay. So they did not. Nope. Okay. We, to, we, we did have to, we did form a subcommittee, you know, of the PBC, right. which has Stephanie Holland joining JD and I. And so she did a viewing of the finishes before the recommendation. And then the architect joined the call last night as well. Um, Bye. Okay, very good. Uh, Karen, I know you got to get going, so why don't we move right to Board of Selectmen? I know I'm really stressed out right now in this environment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, a couple of things very quickly. I, um, I did want to, Linda touched on this. Um, the Board of Selectmen is meeting this coming Tuesday night, um, and um, we will be voting on the um, uh, agreement with the um, abutters, um, which is uh, part of what that change in the right turn only. So that agreement will put to bed that litigation. Um, oh, nice. So that will be a big relief. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that, um, you know, you probably remember a while ago, the uh, food pantry, who they are talking, um, JD, you're absolutely right there numbers are soaring. So many people are in need of their services. Um, and if, you know, last year they, or I don't even remember when, sometime before, <laughs> they came and wanted to um, request space for, in the B-Wing as temporary home for the food pantry. Yeah. Um, and the board had a great deal of discussion about that, obvious concerns about that, because that building, you know, is that building. Um, however, they are being priced out of their current home yeah. Um, and it is likely that um, that will occur, but it will not occur until the senior center construction is finished. Um, okay. And simultaneously, we are very much in earnest. It's our priority this year is to try to find a use for that building, whether it, you know, whether it's reused, whether it's torn down, whatever it is. We don't want to wait any longer to have those that research done. So. You know, I don't know what their long-term future is, but they will be abutting the senior center shortly after the opening of the senior center. Um, I, I personally think that's a great synergy. So that's happening. Um, also on our meeting uh, Tuesday, you should all be aware, this is very interesting, that it's the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage and Situate had a number of very prominent suffragettes. So we're <laughs> proclaiming a suffrage centennial, which I'm, you know, a resident brought it to our attention, and I think it's a very cool thing to know. Good, and I, one other thing, I'm looking at our, our uh, I already mentioned the, um, the furniture and fixtures. Um, and I guess the only other thing from the town is we've, um, you know, we've set town meeting for um, November 16th. Um, pending anything happening. <laughs> um, so the warrant will open also t on Tuesday. A lot of the things that we postponed last meeting will be on it. Um, and, um, and just so you know that, oh, I remember the other thing. The other thing that's on the agenda is we'll be kicking off the diversity and inclusion committee for the town. Um, and that will affect the Council on Aging in two ways. One, um, the policies and procedures that are in place for for Council on Aging will be reviewed just like every other department. Um, and there will also be an opportunity, assuming that the board approves what's been proposed, um, there will be an opportunity for um, many people to apply to serve on that committee um, from, um, at large. So that might be of interest to um, some of uh, your clients. Actually it is, yeah, they've already, we've talked about it, so that's nice. Yeah. So that'll that's, be publicized. That, yeah, we'll kick it off. Um, we'll vote on, on what the mission and the, and the charge is on Tuesday night. And then assuming that that goes through smoothly, then right away they'll be open up to applications, just like you would apply to any other board. Great. So um, that's I, all I have. I don't, anybody else have a question for Karen? I just have yeah. one. Mm -hmm. So how um, does the Board of Selectmen plan uh, or think that they're going to pursue the the idea of for the B-Wing. How will you um, enlist the community in um, offering suggestions or what they want to see done or is it going to be like that? 
we are in the process of figuring that out right now. Um, what we instructed our town administrator to do was to come up with a plan mm -hmm. um, that would, um, you know, outline the uses that we think would be appropriate for the site and mm -hmm. then basically come up, and that may be where we have inclusion from residents, although we've done a lot of research on this already. You know, we have a pretty good idea what people think about it um, through the master plan um, planning. Um, but anyway, so we'll, we'll have to figure out that process and then um, essentially we'll probably end up putting out a request for interest or, you know, we'll set out parameters and put it out there to the universe and see, you know, in my mind, if we offered it to say a senior affordable housing developer and we gave him the site and then they could develop it, what would he, you know, what would they, that proposal look like, that kind of thing. Yeah. But we're just figuring out that whole thing right now. Um, you know, because obviously not just anything can go on that site between rec, historic buildings in the senior center. It has to be a compatible, thoughtful use. We're not putting them all in there. <laughs> right. so. so just given the idea that it sort of had been, you know, pushed by so many community members that obviously okay. I, I, I just assumed there would be an opportunity for them to <laughs> voice well, their... You know, the, the overriding thing is going to be... Uh, whatever's there, how is it going to get paid for? You know, the community may say, we absolutely want to save this building. It's historic. And we know that there's a great bunch of people that think that, but it's like, okay, then we have to find somebody that's going to come up with 30 or 40,000, 30, 30 or 40 million dollars to do that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. Maybe there's somebody cleverer than me than that. You know, <laughs> so, um, you know, we'll, we'll put it out there and that'll be the, you know, that'll, and then we'll look at what the proposals are. And then we, I think that's another opportunity for a community conversation. Up, oh, you got Gordon waiting. <laughs> there you go. Um, the other, that was one thing I didn't mention is the master plan it was almost on the finish line and then COVID hit. And it's um, Ben Bornstein, who's heading that up for the planning board is restarting that um, process again in September. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna we're gonna try to get that. You know, now that we've all figured out how to meet via Zoom, I think we're gonna be able to do a lot more things that have been on hold. I think I got it. Oh. Okay. Very okay. good. All right, Gordon, you you can be heard. I don't see you yet. Oh. So if you, hi, we we can hear you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for for Karen? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Um, how about social other services, Joan Powers? Oh, we haven't had any meetings, but yeah, all the services continue, including Meals on Wheels. So everything's going good. Yeah, they're doing Okay. Good. So no news is no news. Right. Okay. Uh, and friends of Situate Seniors in Lane? Yeah, we have not met at all since COVID. Um, we have made um, several donations to the food pantry as part of our organization. Um, we, the build a campus thing has not been active at all. Um, so it's been kind of like really, really, really quiet. But I need to say that personally, I am super excited to be a counselor, a shine counselor for situation. So, well, I still have to go through my mentoring process. But, okay, yeah. So um, maybe I could I'm moving, I'm moving there. Good. <laughs> maybe I could ask Elaine, maybe it's a good time just to go through you to ask, you know, we could have a virtual meeting with, um, you know, the current, President and Vice President, just to know where you're at with potential donations to the senior center. Yeah, I, um, that, would that, nice would be, that would be a great thing. I, I will try to get Sandy to um, set up a meeting so that we yeah. can talk about what's- just As we look at the budget, we, we you know, foresee but, a-, a Ladies, this will take a higher I'm sorry, <laughs> we, we have, um, we do still have a certain amount of money available both be it from build a campus and from yeah. uh, okay. the seniors so All right. we need to move forward and and 
All right. So you can mention it to them or I'll call them, but I think, you know, this month would be good to maybe have a, an idea. Yeah. Oh, Karen, Karen has a question. I just, on that, uh, you, you mentioned the naming of the rooms and all of that. It's, you know, it's gonna happen fast, all of this stuff. And so if you can put on the agenda of a, of you guys have a joint meeting with the friends is everybody should be on the same page because, right. you know, if they're gonna be marketing room naming opportunities, you don't want to surprise anybody with that. <laughs> a joint meeting would be a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Measure. I, I will reach out to, um, Sandy and see if what we can do because she's the current president and yeah. No, it's not gonna fit him. Okay, well Gordon is oh. <laughs> he's gonna tell her I want it. <coughs> so Jordan, yeah. uh Elena, yeah. you all set? I, yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm driving, but <laughs> yes, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Surprise on the road. I'm being careful. Okay. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's been kind of quiet. Um, Jerry and I have been talking about, you know, kind of a soft sell. Um, we don't really have the manpower to go out knocking on doors for uh, for uh, naming rights. Um, so we're going to probably do it mostly through social media. Um, so, you know, in the next week or so, we'll probably get together with Linda and I don't know what's happening with FOSS. I don't even know if there's a, still a FOSS group yeah. going on, but um, their, their fundraising is sort of different than what we're doing, uh, what we, we intend to do. We still intend to do ours with the intention that the money that um, is raised for naming rights will go toward reducing the debt. And uh, that has to be done before the bond is closed. So we've got probably four or five months to work on that. Um, FOSS seems to be more concerned with raising money to help Linda with programming and stuff like that. So, I mean, Build a Campus never started out with that in mind. So, you know, we're gonna press on and uh, work on naming rights and see what we can do. Um, yeah, not to say that we're not supportive of Linda and her programs, we certainly are. But I think there are two divergent yeah. ideas about uh, the monies that need that need to be or or will be raised. So, yeah, different process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people are very eager. I've talked to a number of people who are looking forward to the naming opportunity, and there are other people who say, "No, I just want I don't want to do that. I just want to give money to senior center for whatever Linda's going to need money for." So, yeah. Um, that's that's how I see it proceeding in, in, in the you know in the future. Yeah, yep. good. And we, 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 I think I, uh, Elaine, we've got what thirty thousand dollars right now in the account, something like that. Something like that, Gordon. I, I I don't have the exact numbers in front of us, but it's it's yeah a little less than thirty, but it is a good amount. Yeah. Um, so you know. We'll do as much as we can, um, and I think we'll be reasonably successful. Uh, we have, we've unfortunately don't we don't live in a community with a lot of uh, businesses, which is where a lot of other centers have relied to get their naming rights um, accomplished. Um, you know, we've only got maybe three or four businesses that I think might possibly be willing to do something like that. So, yep. That's where we're at. Okay. Oh, good. We've all been in limbo, so we appreciate yeah. the, the thought and the effort. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Gordon before he makes a wrong turn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost in Norwell. I'm doing okay. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. Um, so I know we're, we're getting late here a little bit. I'm not sure if anybody's got a... But, um, we were going to try to hand it, uh, hand over, I think, to Caitlin to just give us an overview of, or is Linda going to do that? An age-friendly action plan? No, no. Caitlin, Caitlin is the best man, woman for the job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was on the agenda that she's worked hard on this draft for us for the steering committee, and we want you to hear from her what she's um, been able to put together. Right. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, so you may or may not remember that 
Um, now it's been, I think, almost two years since Situate was accepted into the World Health Organization um, and AARP's network of age-friendly communities. And so at that time, we were, I believe, the 257th community in the country and the 31st community in Massachusetts to commit um, to that network, which essentially meant that we we're gonna take a look at ourselves and identify places where we could become more age friendly. And really that means, you know, inclusivity with respect to sort of social inclusivity as well as physical inclusivity, the built environment, walkability, um, things like that. And so we have a committee, a subcommittee, a sort of steering committee that's been assembled and we've had several meetings um, over the last year, as well as trying to keep uh, tabs on what's been going on around the community with respect to other planning processes and connecting this work with what is already happening in Situate. And so um, I recently finished a draft. We, we are expected by the World Health Organization and AARP to submit a draft of our action plan by the end of September. And so I, I have, I did, was able with the input of those other plans and the steering committee complete that draft um, very recently. And so the plan, just so you guys know, the plan will be, um, Linda and JD have had an opportunity to look at it. They have some feedback that they'll get to me. And then from there, the steering committee, the age-friendly steering committee will, will review it and, and provide their input. And then after that, I'd like to share it with you all as the board um, for your input and ideas. I'll probably do that um, via email with some level of instruction <laughs> on how to get that back to me. Um, and then finally, what I'd really love to do is before we submit it um, to the World Health Organization is I'd like to put it up for public comment somehow, um, just given in you know the time of COVID, that's I think one of our best opportunities to really get wide feedback. And so um, I know Linda may have some ideas of how we can do that, you know, posting it on the town website or something like that for people to review. But ultimately the goal will be to submit that by the end of September and then that'll um, give the, the committee as well as the board some ideas for what we can be working on um, in the coming years. So we'll have, um, so once we submit the report, just as a reminder, once we submit the report, we have three years of commitment left um, with the World Health Organization. And so in those three years, they're expecting us to implement some of the action items that are laid out in this report. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make them things that are feasible <laughs> um, and doable. And so um, anyway, that's just the update on that. We are going to make, make our deadline. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear from me uh, via email for, for your feedback. Very good. Thank you, Caitlin. That's great. Great. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I did. So I don't know if anyone had um, seen or even participated in the Coastal Vision 2070 document draft that was put out online and people could click in and read it and give comments back for Kyle to receive. So I am going to find out how he did that. And I think that would be a great opportunity for the community to see it, you know, and, and just to get the word out, which, you know, we've tried to do um, through the steering committee and through the board, but, you know, still more to do. And it's been a little quiet. We've been a little quiet, obviously, yeah. for the last six months. Yeah, but I think, again, the timing is nice. You know, we've got a new master plan coming. We've got the new senior center coming. We've got this action plan coming. And I think to be able to sort of, as much as we can, um, draw on those synergies. Because, again, this is not about reinventing the wheel or having our own plan. It's about taking yeah. a look at Situate as a whole and identifying places, you know, to just make sure that we're thinking about aging when we're thinking about you know, yeah. redoing that park or updating this sidewalk yeah. or whatever to just uh, make sure that that lens is being uh, recognized. So I think it's great oh, timing. It. It, you're right. New it new absolutely. Is. Too, so. Sorry, JD. Sorry. We've got a new inclusion. Yes. Diversity yes. Inclusion yes. Yeah. Yep. Our minority initiative coming down the pike. So that ties in too. Um, Thank you, Caitlin. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll move forward on that as soon as possible. Does anybody have any other comments, business, old, new to raise? Mm -hmm. That I think might be new business. No, new business. Okay. Anybody else? Other business? Yeah. I have I have news, but it's not business. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm having another baby. 
<laughs> I, I, always, I always remember when Lucille called me out the last time. Um, so I beat her to it, but um, it's a good one. You only beat me to it because I was on mute. I was going <laughs> to <laughs> I put myself on mute because of the dog, but I was thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's a boy and it's due in December, so. Oh, wow. Ah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, that's nice timing, too. Yeah. The year with a bang. Yeah. Man, you're yeah well, 2020 busy. wasn't interesting enough, so I figured I'm <laughs> You're going to be busy. Good way to end the year. Good. I hope you feel good. I do have a quick question. Um, are we, are we like through with our? In other words, I think I'm six years now. I think I'm about winding up. We're ignoring that altogether. So um, I and maybe Karen wants to weigh in, but I think because of obviously the COVID situation, the selectmen haven't taken their usual course with putting up for uh, new committee members. Okay. So until we get that, <laughs> you can't okay. let you go. What happened to the other ones that came along? Well, that I forgot them today. They, they, we have oh. two. <laughs> they were I forgot, forgot them. unfortunately. <laughs> that was my not, not purposely. Okay. All right. Should, but sure. Karen, so I don't know what the time frame might be for the board to. Um... So Lorraine sent a you you um a JD. You should have received an email from Lorraine to ask every board chair. You know, if anyone was resigning, is anybody yeah. in, um, whose re, um, ex, uh, term is up, are they intending on returning? She's compiling those lists to see what openings are. And as soon as that list is together, then we will open up applications late oh, and, okay. Um, okay. and then figure out how we're going to do interviews and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I, I have not seen that. I have not received that yet, but I assume oh. it's coming. Uh, yeah. it, you should have received it probably twice, actually. I should have received nope. it too. I believe. I think my six years are up. Haven't seen. Haven't well, seen it would have gone to the right. would have gone to the chair for him to yeah. look and see who was expiring, and then he I, would ask you whether you. I've wanted. not seen anything from Lorraine. Okay. Would you mind just shooting her an email? Because I sure. probably will forget. <laughs> sure. So I think it's just the two, Lucille and JD. Are are their their time is. Okay. Okay. Up. All right. But so you, you have at least have one more meeting if not two. Yeah. There are because of the um, we were so late last year. There's not going to be as many, which is actually fortunate because of the <laughs> circumstances. Not as many openings in this particular upcoming mm -hmm. thing. Okay. So, but you know, as soon as Lorraine has all of that input, I will I will check with her tomorrow just to to make sure that uh, you know she has a complete list because if you didn't get it, then maybe 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 it didn't go out. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Well, on that note, we're sharing Lucille as it is, too, because she's the, the new or the latest president of the Rotary Club, so I know she's got a lot of things going on. Congratulations. And, and they, they have, she's sort of looking, planning to help us out at the Senior Center with something um, mm -hmm. that should be very nice. So that's wonderful. I have something in mind mm -hmm. to do. <laughs> uh, Why? Good. Um, does anybody have anything else to raise besides, you know, new babies, rotary <laughs> stuff, you know, anything, anything, anybody got? No, um, I just wanted to say that I thought it's very impressive that uh, all the work on the senior center has continued in spite of COVID and you guys huh. have like had all the meetings and stuff. I, I'm very impressed with that. Oh, that's, great. that's nice. Laura. Thanks for saying so. Trying. <laughs> it's, it's starting to come. Starting to come together. I also drive past it every day and see yeah. it. <laughs> well, and have you noticed there's been, you know, I can't even say how many, but I showed up once and played once with them, but they had two full courts with a wait for the pickleball courts, you know, at eight in the morning, three or four, four, four mornings a week, they've been doing the pickle, pickleball. I mean, it's the same people who have played in our program, but it's like they don't even, you know, they don't need a program necessarily. That's nice to have those two courts and Mara. Glancy is, or the rec department is um, planning to resurface all the tennis courts and then add the pickleball lines to the rest of them as well. So, although they're oh, being good. scared, oh, at least good. That's great. That. Wow. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Very it's good. That's good. 
Uh, well, if no one has any other information, business comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Uh, we will plan to try to get Caitlin's things out to people soon, and we'll. Um, but we'll, our next meeting is September. Oh, it's September. I'm say September tenth, off the top yeah. of my head. <laughs> So cool. September 10th, you got it. Right. All right. So everyone, uh, um, appreciate you hopping on. Everyone stay safe and, and masked up and distanced and, um, and stay so. healthy. We will. You too. Okay. Did we miss okay. Doc Ellis, Janice? <laughs> that is tomorrow night. Tomorrow oh, night? it is. Oh. Yeah, tonight? Tomorrow I it was tonight. No, isn't it next week? No, tomorrow next? it's 6 o'clock. Oh, I will miss it. I thought it was tonight. Next week is the Brown Brothers, though, I think. Yeah, they. I think this might be rescheduled from because they just got rained out. Oh, it did, right. Yeah. Okay. So you said tomorrow night at 6 is Doc Ellis? At the bandstand. Yeah, okay. I thought it was a Thursday night. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they were supposed to play a few weeks ago. And I it was raining. So. Okay. okay. I don't know. <laughs> and they did a little they did a little you know mini one on the friday night after yeah. that yeah and that was Tom but i think time. mills couldn't be there yeah mills couldn't be there. no no okay good enough all right well yeah things are starting to return a little a little bit of normal a little bit. yeah anyway yeah. everybody looks great good to see you yeah this is great Thank you, everyone bye bye, bye. bye.